Well, first of all, before this year's over, they need to sell more cars. You guys quit patting yourselves on the back, quit congratulating yourself about the 18 million, and go get the rest of the year. This thing's not over. Sell more cars, do not have a parade. This, you know, Grant, there still seems to be a lack of training in dealerships. What do you say to the dealers who aren't offering training still to this day? Well, you got you know, look, the, if, if, we, if we really boil it down to the simplicity of the situation, the dealers are making more money, the general managers are making more money, and nobody else is. Right. So right. You, got, you guys and gals that, that want to make more money, you, regardless of the dealer, okay, whether it's the dealer or not, the dealer that I worked for when I was selling automobiles did not believe in training. That did not prevent me from investing in myself. In 1985, I, I invested $3,000 in my own education. Today, that's like $6,800. Within 30 days, I was the top salesperson in the state of Louisiana. Within four months, I was the top 1% in the country. Training is the responsibility of the business owner, but if he's not gonna do it at the end of the day, it's the responsibility on me so that I can take care of my family and my kids. Right, and obviously you had a lot of motivation and determination there. Those are really important characteristics in salespeople. What would you say to salespeople who want to become managers? They're interested in taking it to the next level. What characteristics do they need to have? Don't do it. Do not do it. Do not <laughs> become the manager, man. Just stay in the freaking revenue deal. Go out and hustle. Look, there, there's nobody in the marketplace more valuable than a salesperson. It's not, management is not the most valuable, okay? If you look at great companies, it is, it is the entrepreneurial spirit and the sales of that company. So the, the, let's say you bring a company to Shark Tank and, and uh, Mr. Wonderful and Mark Cuban are there. They're not gonna say, well, tell me about your management team. They're just not gonna say that. They're gonna say, tell me about the sales. How many sales, I've heard about the idea. I've seen your socks. Your socks are great. How many have you sold? So, right. so I would just tell people, look, there's no real money in management. You either wanna own the deal or you want to sell the deal because the owner is becomes dependent upon the revenue machines in the company. Now, if you're going to go into management, you know, if you're going to do that, make sure that you're driving the revenue of that team or division or department. Okay, Grant, the average dealership writes about a thousand ROs per month, but how do we continue and convince the sales department that they're still missing tremendous opportunity when it comes to vehicles that need to be serviced? Well, I mean, that's going to come down to like really opening up an individual's eye. This is where management is important and should be inspiring the sales team to look for, I mean, why do I want to find more opportunities? Why do I want to prospect my neighborhood? Why do I want to go back to service? 76% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Now, despite the fact that the automobile industry is having a record banner year by unbelievable numbers, 76% of all salespeople, parts people, service people, employees in car dealerships in America live paycheck to paycheck in the wealthiest country on planet Earth. This is a, this is a travesty. It is a travesty that you have all these opportunities around you everywhere, from your neighborhood to the movie, to the theater, to everywhere, they're all over the place, and salespeople aren't going back there and saying, hey, let me give you a free appraisal right now, okay? Well, I don't want a free appraisal. Well, it's free. You should know what your car's worth here at the end of the year so you can tell your CPA. Okay, I don't, man, find some creative reason to get in front of people and pitch people. Now, the reason that's not happening, Corinne, is because the salespeople are not properly motivated. The guys in Sioux City, Iowa, and thinks 50 grand is paying his bills when it's not. So it's like that manager needs to figure out how do I get this guy motivated to go from 50 to 70? And would you also say that it's the sales department's role to make sure they are introducing every new car buyer to the service department? Well, I mean, I'm not a big proponent of that, but, but only because when I go to a restaurant, I don't really need to see the kitchen. I want to see the steak. Right. So I, I, know, I know most car dealerships would disagree with that because they spent $8 million on their service facility and they're so proud of it and they want to walk me back to it. Look, if I come to buy a BMW from you and you want to walk me through your service department, I'm going to be like, dude, I don't care about your service department. I'm never, ever coming back here again the rest of my life. I'm buying a car and somebody's going to bring it back here when I bust the rims up. So when I go to, when I go to a dentist, 
I sit in the chair, he fixes my tooth. He does not bring me to the back and show me all the equipment. I know he's proud of it, but I don't care. Fix my tooth, sell me the car, get me in and out. I do not need to see your grills in the back or how hot the, the, the range gets or where you wash your dishes. I don't care. I know you do, but I don't as a consumer. Right. Okay, Grant, let's talk about social media. We know you have a huge social media presence. Huge! What would you say to the sales it's huge. that wants to get more involved? What do they need to be focused on? First of all, what would you tell them? What would you recommend? The only person that has a bigger social media following than me is maybe Donald Trump. <laughs> and and he could very well become the next president of the United States. Somebody said something about, well, he doesn't know anything about the Internet because he's saying we should block ISIS from the Internet. Donald Trump knows more about how to use the Internet than, than every other GOP uh, combined. Okay. So, so what would I tell salespeople? Look, man, this is a funnel. This is a funnel. This is a, this is a magnet. This is an unbelievable gift. Probably the biggest gift I have been given in my entire career has been social media. It was like I was already on fire, and it was like napalm hit this fire and just like... Now, this is what I would tell people. If I, if I could tell you one thing, because Corinne, I know you're rolling really fast right now. And CBT's on a timeline and the production guys are figuring out where to edit and cut this and all that. Here's the deal. Do not have a favorite social media. There is no one social media. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Snapchat. I'm 57 years old. I'll do a Snapchat. I'll do five or six Snapchats today and I know they're going to 13-year-olds. They're one day going to grow up and say, I think I recognize that guy. See, see, I don't care that I, don't, I like it or don't like it. It doesn't matter to me. I, I don't like Facebook. I beat it up every day. So you say all platforms are all critical for the, people at the dealership. If you're trying to get out of, let's say Miami floods and I want to get my kids out of here. I use whatever road I need. I, I don't want to go down a dirt road or the bayou or the, uh, or the river, but I'm going to use whatever, whatever road gets me where I'm going. It doesn't matter to me, Facebook, Twitter, Phone calls, hey, what about phone calls? People instant message me every day. Like I probably get 80 instant messages a day. I don't look at them, so I don't know why you guys are using them, but maybe, maybe pick up the phone, follow up the instant message with a phone call or a letter or an email or use them all. Okay, Grant, we know that December is huge for dealers as far as looking at their sales team. Maybe they had a great team of 10 salespeople, right? But they think four of them aren't living up to expectations. Should dealers get rid of those four people or try to work with them for next year? You should always, you should always get rid of people. Always. Always get rid of people. Okay, if Santa doesn't deliver, I'm going to fire him. <laughs> when the Easter Bunny lets me down, I get rid of him. Okay? When politicians okay. don't do what they say, I vote against them. When I have employees that can't show up on time and they know they're supposed to be here at a certain time and they know there's traffic in town, dude, do it three times, I guarantee you I'll fire you. Okay? Okay, I, 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 if your numbers don't go up, I'm getting rid of you. I don't care if you've been here 25 years, 25 minutes, 20, look, if you can't drive the number up, I get rid of people. I don't hire new people first. I get rid of people that are holding things down then we start adding people because that's what de that's what decides what the culture in the, in the environment is going to be like. Right, and part of adding people obviously means plenty of training. So, what would you say to those managers who have received little leadership or management training? What can they do to perfect those managing training skills? Well, look, you you hit on it, Corinne. The, the management needs the training. You know, car dealer was telling me the other day, you know, I got 10 guys that need training. Dude, you don't need 10 guys that need training. You need three guys that need training first, and I'll give it to your 10 people, okay? Well, let, let's train the middle management guys. Let's train them so they have the right, right mindset. At this company, I don't blame employees. The first thing I do is I look to four managers. I, I don't look to the 55 people here. I look to the four people that are driving those 55. They picked them, they put them in a position, I want my numbers, okay? I want my numbers, that's what I want. I want my sales, my numbers, my goals, my objectives met, period, end of story. Training has to happen, it has to happen every day, but I need my objectives met while we're doing that. So I would just tell management, put all the pressure on that management team to make sure they're reading, they're learning. We, we have a university, okay? There's 17 million views this year at our university. In one year. 
Okay, that's a huge number. I'm starting to compete with schools and colleges, Cornell University. So, so we know this works. And, yeah. and, and, no, it's and, in demand, obviously. Say again? I said, you know, it's obviously in demand if you're getting that many people a part of it just in this year alone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so Grant, let's talk about salespeople and maybe someone has joined the auto industry this year and this is their first year in it and they're thinking, okay, I don't know if there's enough room for me to grow in the auto industry or to make enough money. Are people coming in and out of the auto industry too quickly and not giving it a chance? Possibly. Possibly? <laughs> what, what would you say to the person who thinks, you know, I'm not sure if this is for me, but they're not weighing all the options? Well, you need to kill yourself. Look, look, if you're going to any, if you're going to anything thinking this is not for me, you're, you're in the wrong thing. You should not, you shouldn't even be there. So look, you, 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 you go into housing. You want to go, I mean, how many different industries are you going to go into? Technology, housing, uh, you're going to go build a house, you're going to go do labor. Maybe you need to commit. The automobile industry is a massive industry, tremendous opportunity, lots of lazy people, lots of irresponsible people. And, 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 and what that means is, a lot of disengaged people, what that means is there's tremendous opportunity because car dealers do respect high levels of performance. And so if you can, right. get, if you can get the, deliver that kind of a live commitment, um, you, you'll be valued in the automobile industry. Okay, so let's talk about, you mentioned Donald Trump earlier. Let's talk about a couple, there's a couple immigrants at the forefront of the election right now. And the last time we spoke to you in October, you said that Immigrants are great employees. Do you still agree with that? Do you still think they're the best employees for a dealership team? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I, I think that people that, that have a strong drive to take care of mom and dad in another country is, is a motivation you cannot purchase. You can't, it, it's, 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 a, it's an asset. Like, forget skills, ability, intelligence, okay? If I have a guy highly motivated, like driven by something bigger than the job, that cat will run through walls. Right. And, and, and then add skills, then add ability, then add technology, and then he's lethal. So, so I have that thing. I'm not in, I was born in the United States, but I have this thing that a car dealer can't give me. A manager can't, you don't, you don't need to give it to me. And by the way, while I'm saying that, understand that I'm 57 years old, okay? I have the energy of probably three 20-year-olds. So don't think that you guys could be looking, overlooking some people that are older, because today at 57, I have a tremendous work ethic. I show up early, I can stay late. I'm not getting in trouble, I'm not going to clubs, I'm not smoking kush. You know, I'm not doing any of this stuff. I'm not dating chicks, I'm not looking for women, right? I'm married, I got two kids. I got focus. So some of those are more valuable to me, employees, in addition to the immigrant guy, the guy that's got that influence. Maybe he's sending mo uh, money back to ISIS, I mean, to, to mom and dad. Whatever, right? <laughs> okay, Grant, we'll switch gears here. We'll talk about the average... I bet you guys cut that out of there. I bet y'all cut it out of there because y'all so conservative. <laughs> we'll, see. we'll see what we do. The average consumer visits one and a half dealerships before purchasing a car... What would you say to the customer that walks in and they're just like, you know, give me the best price possible. What do you say to them? Dude, that's what I'm doing. That's what you're doing? I walked into a restaurant the other night. The guy gives me the menu. I'm like, I don't want the menu. I want a New York steak, medium rare, burn it on both sides. I don't want any sides. And let me see your wine list. And what was his reaction? Uh, uh, you know, he, 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 he wants to do his whole drill. I don't want the drill. I don't want the right. drill. There is some percentage of your clients if you guys ever see me walk onto your lot, you need to say, hey, Mr. Cardone, what are you here to buy? Because I'm not there to look. I'm not there to meet you. I'm not there to build rapport. I'm not there to find out about your family. I'm not there to talk about sports, politics, or the weather. I'm there to buy a car. That's the only reason I would ever go to a car dealership. That does not mean that there's not people out there looking. Sure, maybe they are looking. But the way I would handle them is, hey, thanks for coming. What can I get your information on? Right. Time so, so, so that I don't duplicate anything you've already done. Have you been on the internet? Did you hit our website? Do you know what we want? What you want? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm looking for a Ford X150. I need your best price on it. Excellent. Let me get your car appraised. We'll start with that. Let's go get your number on the F150 while the used car manager is appraising the car. I want to co co collapse time. I want to invert the process, and I want to control the customer. 
And you'll control the customer by inverting the process on him. He's not used to it. Do you think the dealer should deliver a lease and purchase option on every pencil? Of course I do. Why and wouldn't why I? That? Why wouldn't I? <laughs> Tell me why wouldn't I? Okay, where, where do I not get options on planet Earth? Why would I have to wait for an option? If I'm telling you I'm paying cash for a car, why wouldn't you show me a payment? I don't understand that. Well, you, got, you guys are dumb or lazy? Or, or, or just <laughs> never, not committed? Neither. Huh? I said hopefully neither, right? Well, I mean, they must be something because they're not doing it. Give me a price on, on cash. Give me a payment on 36, 48. See, I don't think they don't have the technology. The problem is they don't have the technology. So like we have an app and uh, we, where, where we deliver all the data to the customer without them asking. The customer shouldn't even have to ask. This should have been sent over a phone call or a text while I was on a phone call from the BDC. Right. Okay, so let's talk about 2016. Man, you want to talk about a lot of stuff. You want to get as much from me as you can in this short interview, don't you? We're racking up, right? You're it's a greedy awesome. lady. That's all I can say. Okay, let's talk goal setting. What is the right way to set goals each year? Talk about maybe your process, what dealerships should do to make sure they start off the new year and they it comes down to socks, right? It's all about the socks. D dude, the socks are sick. Come on. The socks are good, right? Corinne, which ones you want? I'm going to send you some. What's that? What socks you want? I'm going to send you some socks. You like the, you like the octopus? I like the octopus. I'm sending you some GC socks, buddy. You got to sleep in these, though. You got to sleep in these one night, and then you need to send me the uh, a photo, okay? I'll put it on all my social media. I love it. Okay, so your question now is what do you do to get goals? Goal setting, yeah, goal setting for 2016. Yeah, well, I don't write my goals for, for a year. I write my goals every day. Okay. I write them down in the morning. I write them down at night. I write them in this little planner, okay? It's, I've got a place right here for goals in the morning, goals in the afternoon. Three times a day, I write my goals. In the morning when I wake up, I write them down again at night, and I write them down when, I'm, when, when I lose. Anytime I get disappointed, discouraged, down, I lose a deal, I write my goals down. So you guys, if you guys wanna write your goals down on January 1st or December 31st, good luck. It's never worked, it's never gonna work, okay? You should write your goal. If you're really committed to your goals, if you're really committed to an unbelievable life, and you don't wanna be a slave, or just a worker bee for the rest of your life, write your goals down in the morning, write them down at night, and write them down when you're disappointed. And it'll freaking rock your world. That's why you see a ton of people at the gym come January, write the New Year's resolution, and then February, it's empty. Dude, by January 20th, the place is empty again. It's ridiculous, because right. people can't stay with anything. You know why? Sell or be sold. Sell or be sold. People get sold on other stuff. So, okay, so, one last question for you, Grant, before we let you go here. So you're a leader in the auto industry. Going into 2016, what is keeping you up at night regarding the auto industry? Things are on fire, but is there anything that, you know, it's keeping you up at night you're concerned about? My wife keeps industry? me up at night. My wife keeps me up at night because she's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 look, nothing. you know what keeps me up at night? What keeps me up is not, at night is like, hey, when do we have the next contraction? I am so excited. I cannot wait for the next contraction. I cannot wait until things contract again and things get tough because that's when the winners surface. You know, that's when the winners can go grab market share from the weak people. So I look forward to the next moment where things become problematic uh, because they challenge greatness in the great ones. Well, we hope you have a great rest of your year, Grant. We appreciate you talking with us today. We'll talk again soon, and thanks for your time. Corinne, love you, Corinne. Sending you these today, okay? Hey, I look forward to it. I'm going to post a picture, I promise. Okay, buddy. Thanks a lot. All right, see you, Grant. Bye.